After last year, it's finally time for another NFL imperialism. So this time on Madden 24, I've made a couple of changes. If you missed last year's video, here's what you need to know. It's just like the board game Risk. But since all you kids know is iPad, Subway Surfers, and Minecraft, you might not know about something real and tangible like a board game like Risk. I just gotta totally adapt the old angry man, yells at clouds type mentality. Wah, that is your music, turn it down. But I, I do have a map behind me and I've made a couple of changes to last year. I had a blank US map last year and I took the team that was actually in that state and that was all the territory they had. So when we spin the wheel to decide which direction they attack, they could claim unclaimed territory. This time around, that has changed. I've given these teams general areas around their home stadium location. However, as you can tell from some of these, it's not exact. When you have three California teams, for the sake of spacing, we have the 49ers kind of moving into Oregon a bit here. And the Seahawks do dominate the majority of the Pacific Northwest, but I'm not giving any team an advantage for having more real estate, more space, none of that this time. I think last time the Seahawks were able to have an advantage because there's no team below them in Oregon. There's no team to the east of them in Montana or Idaho. And if on the wheel of NFL teams, we kept getting the Seahawks, for example, they could expand eastward into not only Idaho, but Montana, North Dakota, and they might have advantages from getting into four different states without really even doing anything. So this time around, teams just have general areas. Here's why claiming territory is so important. When you win a game, I'm gonna boost the quarterback by two overall points, and this time around, you will take the losing team's two best players to add to your own team. So if we were to spin the wheel, get the Chiefs and the North direction, they would attack the Vikings. And if the Chiefs beat the Vikings, they would take Justin Jefferson and whoever the second best player in the Vikings happens to be by overall. Maybe it's Brian O'Neill, maybe it's Daniil Hunter, whoever it happens to be. TJ Hawkinson, Harrison Smith, could be anybody. And once a team loses, they are done. Eliminated from contention, they won't be the final team standing. But the easiest way to show you is just to do it. The first team we're gonna get is the New York Jets. So because there are so many teams in the Northeast of the United States, everything's really, really jam-packed here. I've given the Giants, New Jersey, Long Island, Delaware area. The Jets are kind of pushed up into Southern New York and Connecticut. But again, it doesn't really matter too much other than direction. So if we get slightly Northeast, it's gonna be attacking the Patriots, Northwest, the Bills, Southwest, the Eagles, and South and Southeast will take on the Giants. If the arrow points in a direction that doesn't exactly work, we just go to the closest team. And this is Northwest. The Jets are gonna take on the Bills. I think it's also important to note that the attacking team will be on a disadvantage as they have to go into enemy territory and with the momentum factors and home field advantage bonuses in the modern day Maddens, that could actually end up making quite a big difference. Game one of NFL imperialism here on Madden 24 is a division matchup always creates a little bit more intrigue and we'll see who comes out on top i think on paper and we've seen this matchup by the way before the jets ended up winning in dramatic fashion in overtime but that was real life is it going to end up playing that way in madden we'll have to see jets actually with a great first drive get points on the board seven nothing and the bills really haven't done much on offense so far but they do end up tying it up Jets kind of stall a little bit on offense before retaking the lead 14 to seven. Bills tie it back up, but the Jets are not stopping 17-14 into the fourth quarter. The Bills have the football and we'll see if Josh Allen can lead the Bills down the field and get the win. 27 yard pass play to Stefan Diggs. Bills need a touchdown to go on top. Although I'm sure they wouldn't hate a field goal, it just is not the primary motivation for them. Obviously want to take the lead this late in the game. Less than three minutes to play. Allen down the seam, finds Gabriel Davis. He goes down to the 11. Or he's just Gabe Davis now. He, I think it was Gabriel at UCF. But Gabe Davis, Gabriel's a little bit too formal, I suppose. Allen out of the shotgun. Will look to throw with time. Stepping up and scrambling. Allen power up the middle. Into the end zone, touchdown. Bills take the lead late. Josh Allen. Stepping up, finding space, and then showing that speed and that power to get into the end zone through a number of Jets defenders on the goal line. We'll take another look. Allen with a bit of a 360, looking like me back in the day on MW2. 
And then powers into the end zone. CJ Mosley tries to tackle him with his back. Bold strategy. Didn't end up working out this time. Third and 10, you'd assume four down territory here for the Jets, but they do have three timeouts, so it might not be backed up to your own 25. Wilson from the shotgun has an option in the flat to Cook. Ends up chucking it down. That's Tyler Conklin to set up fourth and two. I'm guessing the Jets will go for it, but timeout called by the Jets. Interesting timeout call. And with the Jets burning that timeout, you have to convert on this first down. You have to convert on fourth. Move the chains, and that is nearly intercepted. Kair Elam basically looking like the intended receiver on the play. Wilson not even close to Zach Wilson. For, to Garrett Wilson. Too many Wilsons. Now, I don't think they're brothers. I guess they could be. <laughs> Bills take a 24-17 lead, and that is the ball game. Probably shouldn't even kick the field goal there. Just run the clock down if you can. The Jets are officially eliminated from NFL imperialism. They are off the map. Bill's going to claim that territory. Goodbye, Jets. Everybody wave goodbye. Bye, Jets. All right, Bill's kind of making this weird little shape. We're going to leave him there for now, actually. This is actually a pretty major upgrade for the Jets, getting Quinn and Williams and Sauce Gardner free of charge, except they did have to win the game. And Josh Allen gets a plus two boost from a 93 to a 95. And we will eliminate the Jets from the wheel as well. And we are suddenly down to just 31 NFL teams. Next up is the Arizona Cardinals out in the southwestern United States. And their direction will be to the general southeast. And that pretty much means just going to attack the Dallas Cowboys. And this is actually another matchup we've already seen this year. And the Cardinals pulled off the upset. We'll see if they can do that here in the game. Overall-wise, the Cowboys are at a significant advantage. 87 overall to the Cardinals, 73. And I I would pretty much guess that the Cowboys are going to win this. Buda Baker, Hollywood Brown could be heading to Dallas. And I will say also, if the team already has a quarterback, in terms of adding the two best players, I'm probably going to avoid quarterback. So let's say Kyler Murray was the second highest overall player in the Cardinals probably isn't but let's just say for the sake of argument that he was I wouldn't give the Cowboys Kyler Murray if Dak's like an 88 and Kyler's an 80 just for example Cowboys out to an early 14 nothing lead Cardinals still trying to get something going but they're down now three possessions finally a field goal at least as we go into the second half Dallas starting to pour it on a little bit it's 31 to 3 Cardinals really just not able to do much in this one. I think it's going to be too little too late after a touchdown. 31-10 is your final. The Cardinals are officially eliminated. And the Cowboys continue to move on as they are going to expand westward to take over the Arizona and New Mexico area that I've given the Cardinals. Time to wave goodbye to the Cardinals. They are dead. So the Cowboys starting to claim a lot of territory here just like that. But you got to remember, it's only like two spaces. So... Dak's going to get a boost up to a, well, whatever he is, he's going to get a plus two. And the Cowboys are going to get two pretty good players and an upgrade for them. Buda Baker is a nice get in the secondary. They actually just made me install a roster update. So those changes are, I had to redo them, which I just did. And Josh Allen's a 94 now. So I'm going to boost him up to a 96. So there you go. If you commented that already, he's a 96 now. And they're not going to let me trade Buda Baker over because he's injured in real life. Dude. Let me live. The irony of Buda Baker begging to be traded, and then now I can't even trade him in the video game because he's hurt. So guess what? Not available to be traded. I can't trade him. But the Cowboys do add Hollywood Brown, I guess. All right. And Dak's going to go up to an 89 overall. There you go. So the Arizona Cardinals are officially off the wheel, and we will spin again to determine our next team. That team is going to be... The Cincinnati Bengals. So Ohio's already pretty crowded. Couple of teams in there. We gave uh, the Bengals a little bit of Kentucky. If you didn't know, Cincinnati is a stone's throw away from Kentucky. You th Honestly, you probably could throw a rock across the bridge and, and go from Ohio to Kentucky. I swear to God. Some of you probably knew that. An upsetting amount of you probably did not as the Bengals are going to go about southeast. It's a bit of a judgment call here. I'm going to say that that general arrow direction would make them go ahead and play the Tennessee Titans. That's what we're going to do. The Bengals have an overall advantage here, 84 compared to a 76. And the game does know how limited Joe Burrow is with that calf with these injuries piling up. So 
I imagine the Bengals are going to have a pretty good game here against Tennessee, but maybe not. Pretty low scoring game so far. The Titans with just a field goal, now a touchdown. They're up 10 0. The Bengals get a safety, but have not done anything offensively, and it's 17 to 2. 24 to 2. The Bengals are trying to fight back in it, but I don't know if they're going to be able to. They're running the ball. Back-to-back -back runs by Joe Mixon down 14 with a minute to play in the fourth quarter. Madden is so dumb sometimes. Most of the time. All of the time, actually. I mean, the clock continues to tick. There's absolutely zero sense of urgency here for the Bengals. They're just going to huddle up for the entire rest of the time. Sweet. 20 seconds to play. We'll see if the Bengals get a number of miracles. And there you go. You find the tight end up the seam. That's their final timeout. And it won't matter. There's no time left. What a weird end of the game. But this eliminates the Bengals. And I think if Joe Burrow is a top two overall player on the Bengals, which he surely still is, the Titans just got a big upgrade at quarterback and receiver. I think Burrow and Chase are going to be headed to Tennessee. I really didn't expect the Titans to win that. But it, like, wasn't even that close. I mean, the Bengals got a safety. That was pretty weird. But they didn't do much. So Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase end up losing the game and just get to carry on with the winning team. They're headed to Tennessee. And Joe Burrow is actually going to get an upgrade. He's going to get an upgrade as a result of losing. Going from a 92 to a 94. But, of course, we know wins are not a QB stat. There go There's a lot that goes into it. However, when you come out and don't score any points on offense... That's tough. Next team up is going to be the Miami Dolphins. Well, they only have one direction to go, so we don't even have to spin the wheel at all. The only way the Dolphins can go is north. We're not going to have them take a boat and attack Cuba, so they're going to take on the Bucks. Sunshine State Showdown. Baker Mayfield against Tua. Two top five picks. Baker, of course, going at number one overall, although he's been quite on a different trajectory, I would say, than Tua. Tua one team the entire time. Injuries kind of been the only thing that hold him back. Baker went from the Browns, has played in the Rams, Panthers, Bucks. I feel like I could even be missing somebody. I don't think I am, though. This one could end up getting pretty interesting in simulation. The Bucks are actually out to a lead. Dolphins tie things up at 14 and then take the lead 21-14. And I need to be online. I don't want to be. All right, we're back. Bucks have the lead 28-21, now 31-21. The Dolphins are making it a game, though. And unfortunately for them, they allow Baker Mayfield to run into the end zone. And now it's going to be a big uphill battle. I think they just turned over the football. Or, no, the, I think the Yellow's penalties, actually. They've just taken three penalties in four plays. Oh, it's over. The Dolphins have been eliminated... By the home Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mike McDaniel cannot believe it. I'm kind of shocked myself, but Baker outdueled to a tongue of Iloa. More passing yards, higher completion percentage, also threw for three touchdowns. The Baker show is going to continue as he gets a boost here. And he's also going to get a boost. Tyreek Hill, and it's going to be Teron Armstead because Jalen Ramsey's injured right now, so can't use him. But Teron Armstead... Huge upgrade on the offensive line. He's going to play right tackle, I guess, over Luke Gadecki. So Tyreek Hill and Teron Armstead headed up to Tampa, which means I moved just Tristan Wurst back to right tackle. Is it not going to let me do that? Is there not enough left tackles? Well, it'll work in the depth chart anyway. Or I'll just move somebody else. That'll be easy. And now Wurst to the right side, no problem. And now Baker's up to a 78. It's not like the craziest upset of all time or anything. And I do think the Dolphins actually simulate pretty poorly in my franchise experiences. But I just felt like they were going to win. I don't know. Dolphins officially off the wheel. And the next team up, going up north, going to be the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. So the Vikings have a ton of real estate as they're pushed, I believe, into Montana a little bit. The Dakotas, Minnesota. And... I mean, they have a lot of different teams they could go ahead and fight here, essentially. So pretty much anywhere but north here, it's going to be about southwest. Or pretty much exactly what southwest is. True southwest. And that's going to be Vikings-Broncos. Just purely based on overall, the Vikings do have a tremendous advantage here. And we've seen that not matter at times so far. So we're going to jump in and see who wins. I really love the way Mile High looks in-game. 
And I have for years in Madden. Broncos out to an early 10-7 lead. Vikings obviously can score a lot in a hurry, though. As it's now 15-14, very bizarre score into the fourth quarter, 18-14. Broncos with the football and unfortunately do have to punt. We're going to jump in and watch this Vikings drive. Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, as we've seen before, touchdown gives them the lead. Field goal won't be good enough. They can't even tie it. So they're going to need a touchdown here. Just four minutes to play. They do have the two-minute warning. They do have all three of their timeouts. So I don't really imagine that time will be a factor and from the 43 yard line they're gonna have plenty of time so we'll see if the broncos even get another possession depending on what happens here i expect the vikings to get into scoring position fairly quickly as kirk cousins has plenty of time he'll find a wide open justin jefferson in between four different broncos defenders and that looks a lot like the broncos defense this year so madden pretty realistic i guess Wow, Broncos roughing the passer. Mike Purcell. So, free yardage there for Minnesota. Kirk Cousins threw it incomplete, but they get 15 yards regardless. Now from the 26, Cousins under center. We'll drop back to throw, though. Find TJ Hawkinson wide open over the middle into the end zone for the score. Too easy. Too easy. And that's what I kind of mentioned, is that with this much time on the clock in the field position, the Broncos are probably going to get the football back with a chance to score and obviously win the game. Now, I guess there was a two-point conversion attempt. No, it was just the extra point to make it 21-18. Oh, they were only down four. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Excuse me. So it's 21-18, and uh, the Broncos here kind of in a perfect spot to win this game. Three minutes from the 40. All their timeouts. I don't know if that's going to factor in, though. Can Russell Wilson mount the comeback? Doesn't need much. Finds a receiver. It's Jerry Judy. Going to the other 40. 36 more like it. And uh, in two and a half minutes, the Broncos are in a perfect spot. They might honestly even want to slow it down, but they do need to find the end zone to win. A field goal would be nice to tie it, but you want to win here. Receiver goes in motion. Wilson, quick throw underneath, finds him. They get six. I love that. Just play it slow. You don't need 15 yards of throw. Just check it down. You know, pick up five, six, four, seven. Short to intermediate gains. Don't try to get it all at once. But you also still need to score a touchdown. And when you know, when you get into the low red zone, the field gets so congested, it gets a little bit more difficult to score those touchdowns. So it, maybe they do want to strike from a bit farther out. That's also a possibility. We'll see how they end up playing it. Now into the red zone from the 20. See what Russell Wilson's looking to do. A lot of shotgun so far and a lot of open receivers. That's Cortland Sutton for the first down. I think they're managing this really, really well. Sutton down to the eight yard line. And Russell Wilson now with a minute to work with. First and goal from the eight. He got four plays to find the end zone. Another check down to a wide open tight end. That's the former Dayton and New Orleans Saint, Adam Troutman. He was a, a pretty good prospect coming out of Dayton, to be honest. Broncos actually call a timeout. A little bit surprised by that. Troutman never really got it going in New Orleans. I was kind of surprised by that. I really did like him coming out of the draft. Believe me, it was not easy to find film on Dayton, uh, but he was such a hyped up prospect out of a super small school that actually, you know, was easier than you'd expect. But here he is in the Broncos, has a second chance, and now looking to hope and help his team win the game. He was open, but Wilson throws an interception! Just throw it to Adam Troutman. That might have been 84 instead of 82. I'm not really sure. But Russell Wilson completely throws away the game. Cameron Bynum. I mean, you had a wide open tight end. It was 82. I can't believe he just did that. Just completely threw away the game. The Broncos can't do anything. A first down ends it, and that's it. Not even. Vikings end up squeaking out a win it looks like a real-life Broncos game. Devastating defeat for Sean Payton and the Broncos. Looked like Nathaniel Hackett still at head coach. Although, 
Sean Payton probably feels very disrespected by that if you've heard his comments. How did the Broncos throw that? Literally throw that away. This is actually going to be a huge get for the Vikings, though. They're going to add Patrick Sertan to their secondary and Justin Simmons. Oh, man, the Vikings just got so much better because they need secondary help. Cam Bynum starting a free safety made a huge play, right? in the former first-round pick, Lewis Seen, fighting to get on the field. But look at corner. They brought in Byron Murphy in free agency, and outside of that, it's a Caleb Evans, Andrew Booth Jr., Makai Blackman, Najee Thompson from Georgia Southern. I don't even know who that is, but he'll be headed to Denver. Although, not going to be doing a whole lot of playing as they are eliminated. I guess I really shouldn't be surprised that the Broncos, you know, lose in devastating fashion to get knocked out. Vikings end up claiming a whole lot of territory. And Kirk Cousins getting upgraded. Kirk Cousins could be good enough to win. And now that the defense got better, the Vikings could end up being a real threat to win this whole thing. The one downside they have is that they're so close to the Chiefs. And if you get matched up against the Chiefs, I'm going to be honest, it's probably a loss. Not for sure, but you got a pretty good chance that you're going home. And Kirko bangs with the upgrade to an 86 overall. Kirko chains. Accidentally unchecked the wrong logos there. We had the Cardinals back and the Packers off. No, they're still in it, even though their territory looks incredibly small. All it takes is one win against a team like the Vikings, and you get all of this space. It's free real estate. Just the second attacking team we've seen win a game, by the way. It's a little bit tough. I'm telling you, those home field advantage multipliers actually do something, even in simulation. Indianapolis Colts up next, and they're going to be going northeast. To me, that looks like the Browns. So Colts, Browns up next. Browns at an 85 overall compared to the Colts 79. Browns do have an advantage. And not only do they have the advantage of being a higher overall team, well, they also simulate pretty well historically. And you got a rookie quarterback in Anthony Richardson. So I, I think the Browns are probably going to take this, but that's why you play the games to try to get surprised and see what happens. You know, they got the little elf man on the field now. I don't really care for it, to be honest. I prefer the dog or even the helmet. That little elf just, <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, anyway, it's classic. I get it. Whatever. Colts up, actually. 13-7. to I also like the way the Brown Stadium looks in the game. It just feels like a football stadium. Some of them just feel a little bit bland, but this has, it, it feels like a little personality. Although... It might be eliminated from the tournament here. The Colts come in and just steamroll. As I mentioned earlier, that's why you play the games. Anthony Richardson, 27 of 30 for 319 yards, two touchdowns, did throw two picks. He is three incompletions. Two of them were intercepted. So only one Anthony Richardson pass even hit the ground this game. He was fantastic. The two interceptions kind of is a little bit weird. That's why his passer rating, QB rating there, is a little bit lower. But wow, what a performance. Did he do anything on the ground? Five for 22? All right. And he's going to be getting a plus two upgrade here. I'm not going to give Deshaun Watson to the Colts, and he's not a top two ranked player anyway. The Colts, if Anthony Richardson keeps winning and getting upgrades, they might end up being the team to beat. I know that seems crazy, but when they're getting Miles Garrett, don't think we're going to be able to give them Nick Chubb with the vicious injury he suffered, although it doesn't seem like it's going to be career-threatening, so hopefully Nick Chubb gets back soon and is as dominant as ever. I mean, he's maybe the best running back of the past half decade, plus Christian McCaffrey right up there too, but he's been injured. Nick Chubb has been so good. Don't disrespect Nick Chubb. Joel Batonio is going to be the guy that heads over to the Colts, or... Instead of Joel Batonio, Amari Cooper's also a 90 and feels kind of a more immediate need for the Colts. So uh, with Quentin Nelson at left guard, we're going to give them a receiver in Amari Cooper. And again, same overall. So two highest rated players still kind of fits in my opinion. We're not even kind of, it, it definitely fits. I got to trade not Jannard Avery. And I know it seems small right now, but every bit helps. Anthony Richardson's going to go up to a 72. The Colts just have to keep winning. So the Browns are eliminated. Again, I was kind of surprised by that. That's not what I want. I don't know. I just feel like they usually simulate so well, but not anymore. The Anthony Richardson era is here. He has actually looked great in real life so far and really early. If you watch this channel, you know I was fully on board the Anthony Richardson hype train despite all of you telling me how stupid I was because he can't play quarterback. 
He's just a good athlete. Well, if you watch him play, he continue to improve and improve and improve. And I'm not taking a victory lap already. It's really early into his career. But the fact that he's playing the hardest position and looking this good already, I think it speaks to how good he could be long term. I'm hoping to believe that. Or I believe that and I'm, I'm hoping it ends up being the case. Brown's officially off the wheel. Which team are we going to get next? It is the San Francisco 49ers. Still looking for that first repeat matchup. Haven't got it yet, and this is our first time dealing with a team this far out west. So it will be something fresh. As long as it's not west here, we're going to take whatever result it ends up being. And it ends up being pretty much southeast. That's going to be the Raiders, in my opinion. And the reason I do say my opinion, by the way, is I know there are already going to be people in the comments being like, well, if we take the 49ers from up here, southeast actually hits a crease in a quarter of the Seahawks, or actually it hits the Rams southeast, but... It's, we're doing the Raiders. Believe me, I've been... Uh, last imperialism, I was accused of uh, cheating to let certain teams win. Dude, I do not care. I like, what are you talking about? And I know what most normal people watching this are thinking. There's no way that's possible. There's no way people are that insane. But believe me, they're more insane than you could ever imagine. Welcome to the internet. Why is this so bright in Allegiant Stadium? This looks, it looks like what heaven looks like. Look how bright it is. The field is like white. Why is it so exposed? I don't know. It is tied at 10. The 49ers, again, significant advantage overall wise, but the Raiders are hanging in. Not only that, they are competing only down by four into the fourth quarter and suddenly it got very dark. And who's got the football? Jimmy Garoppolo and the Raiders. They are marching down the field methodically and quickly finding a lot of Michael Mayer, Devontae Adams as well. Again, down by four. Touchdown would give the Raiders the lead. Let's see what they can do. Maybe the last play before the two-minute warning. Garoppolo to the sideline. Can't connect with Adams. Sail out of bounds. No, Mayer with a broken tackle and gets out of bounds. I said the last play maybe before the two-minute warning, but they keep getting out of bounds. Or throwing an incomplete pass, and I kind of expected them to go over the middle. You have time, but time is not a factor. Jimmy G with time in the pocket and finds Devontae Adams for the score. Raiders going to go on top here at home in Las Vegas, looking for the upset of the very talented San Francisco 49ers, and we'll see what the Niners can do. A couple of penalties there, it looked like. Incomplete pass thrown by Brock Purdy. And it's going to be 4th and 15, game on the line. A Purdy throwaway is kind of a weird call there. We're going to see if the 49ers think their defense can do enough. Because they could punt here. I, they're on their own 20, it's 4th and 15. But they are going to line up to go for it. You do have three timeouts, which is the only reason I would say that you could consider punting on 4th and long. But I don't hate going for it either. And uh, it did not work. Raiders pass rush proves to be too much for the Niners and that probably is going to do it probably so Jacobs rushing touchdown Niners can't do anything 34-24 another upset because it's another home team win Raiders come out on top 49ers out of it one of the top teams in the NFC eliminated nearly immediately just took to their first time being picked. Also, I do love the irony of the Raiders moving back to California, which is essentially what happens here. They're moving back to the Bay Area because the Niners are eliminated. So a quick updated look at the map. It's still extremely congested uh, in the Northeast. However, the West, you know, slimming down a little bit. There's going to be a huge upgrade on the offensive line. Jermaine Illuminor leaving. And now you get Christian McCaffrey when you don't really need him. You already have Josh Jacobs, but getting Trent Williams is going to be huge. And we're going to move Colton Miller to right tackle. It is a plus 17 upgrade over on that side. And on the left side, it's a plus 11 upgrade already on Colton Miller. So their tackles just went from eh, not so great overall. Miller, obviously quite good, but Jermaine Illuminar really, you know, devaluing that duo so now probably just the best in the league next to the bucks with teron uh, teron armstead and um tristan warp so they have in real life and jimmy g will also get a boost to a 75 overall i think if the raiders stick around they're going to want a player better than jimmy g but that's who they have right now next team up 
Ooh, it'll be our first repeat team, the Tennessee Titans, with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase now, and they're going to be going about Southwest. I think I'm going to call that the Saints. Again, depending on which part of this you choose, maybe you could say, ah, they get a sliver of the Chiefs. Dude, to the Southwest, it's the Saints. Come on. My favorite little quirk that I do, <laughs> that marks how insane I am, is I argue with people in advance. <laughs> yeah, I'm an, I'm an insane person. But you know what it is? I'm a vet. I've been around the block. I've seen a couple things in the YouTube and the internet game. I know what people are going to say in advance. I promise you. I know I seem insane. It's because I am, as I mentioned. But, um... I don't, there's no real but, actually. It's just I'm insane. And why do I bother arguing? It's free content. Right? We'll see if Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase can help out this Tennessee Titans team. See if they can take on the Saints and get the win. They're up 7-0 already. And this kind of reminds me, this is the Earl Campbell Bowl, if we're going to count the Titans as the Oilers, which they were, and they are up 21-0. It literally is like Earl Campbell. Beast for the Houston Oilers, not so great with the New Orleans Saints at the end of his career. And the Saints are out of it. Eliminated immediately. Derek Carr didn't play well. But Joe Burrow didn't do a whole lot either. Completed 80% of his passes, but for only 166 yards. Part of why completion percentage is a flawed stat, because you're not factoring in what type of completion that is. A screen pass counts the same for completion percentage as a 40-yard throw downfield. So the Saints are done, and the Titans are moving on in. It's such an odd shape. I'm, I'm trying to get it to fit. We're just going to take over Louisiana and then... I don't know what's going on at the top right. I don't even want to say what that reminds me of. And this is going to be a massive upgrade for the Titans. Marshawn Lattimore into that secondary, Tyron Matthew as well. This is a huge upgrade because they do have a particularly weak secondary. And of course, another win. What does that mean? Plus two overall for Joe Burrow. And he is back up to a 96 overall. Saints are off the wheel and we will spin again. And there is, we got nothing. We got no team, because that is the Saints, but I left a space. All right. <laughs> what are the odds of that, dude? Like 1 in 27, probably, or something like that. Got the Lions. Detroit Lions, and they will be going, let's see, to the General Southwest. I would say that's the Colts, pretty much for sure. This could be the end of the Anthony Richardson hype train, or just the beginning. New number one target for... Anthony Richardson and Amari Cooper, and also getting Miles Garrett's kind of nice too. Miles Garrett is just so good. I feel like I can't say that without people saying TJ Watt better, but oh my goodness, Miles Garrett is a once in a generation type player. He is simply unbelievable. Colts are the home team, Lions on the road. 82 overall against 78. Colts are starting to move up a bit. That was a huge boost that they got from winning that game against Cleveland. Who will strike first? It's the Lions up seven with the touchdown. Colts answer right back, though, as we approach halftime. Colts with the lead. Lions tie it right back up and take the lead in the third quarter, 21-14. Colts answer right away, 21-21. Get the football back and score again. It is 28-21 Colts. The Lions with the football. A minute and 42 to play. Clock is ticking. Lions playing a tie. And they have the football in the red zone, too. It's a great spot to be in. They're going to run the ball. David Montgomery kind of stonewalled by that Indianapolis defensive line. Kind of a bizarre call. I get it's first down, but you're not playing for a field goal. You need to find the end zone, and that clock's ticking. Goff from the shotgun, throwing sideline, finding his tight end. Big catch. This is where Miles Garrett needs to step up. Shut it down. A sack here would really crush the Lions. That's good defense on the back end. Goff going for the end zone, can't connect. From the six again, Goff throwing and is intercepted. Zaire Franklin with the pick. And again, we've seen a, a, a quarterback just throw the game away in the waning moments. The Broncos obviously for the win, Lions playing for the tie in the previous matchup, of course. I know the Colts are not the Broncos. Although both horses, so easy mistake. But barring something insane, the Colts are going to end up winning this game. And the Anthony Richardson hype train continues unless he would have fumbled there. And they have an injury timeout. Oh my God, that's not good. 
that's awful because that's a free timeout for the Lions. The Lions are able to keep two timeouts here, and now you need a first down if you're the Colts and want to end it. Why would they not just need the ball? Kneel it down. End it. But that ends up being the game anyway. Colts did enough to get it done, and a nice comeback there by Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson throws for just 95 yards. Two touchdowns, though. A lot of running the ball to Jonathan Taylor. Yup. 23 attempts for 185 yards and two touchdowns. Welcome back to the offense, Jonathan Taylor. What a game. 94 yards after contact as well. That's putting your team on the back. Yes. Putting your team on your back. Not yours, but uh, Jonathan Taylor's. Or mine. I don't know what I'm talking about. Lions are done. And the Colts are moving up and in. It's the wrong color. And also, keep in mind, you don't just get Michigan mainland, you get a little piece of this upper peninsula as well. Some of it we gave to the Packers so close to Green Bay, but Colts getting some peninsula action? I'd be worried if I were other teams. And Frank Ragnow and Amon Ross St. Brown are headed to the Indianapolis Colts. Not a bad upgrade for them, because that receiving core now starts to look, you know, quite good. I'll send Isaiah McKenzie over to get Josh down some more targets. But look at center. Ryan Kelly's a good player, but he's no Frank Ragnow. So some just boosts across the table there. Across the, across the what? Across the, yeah, table? No, across the board. What am I, what's wrong with me today? But Anthony Richardson is now a 74 overall. And hit that subscribe button for more. I like to do fun videos like this. So make sure you're subscribed. I know my videos might already be popping up and you're recommended, but just make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss a video. Can you imagine if you weren't subscribed and missed my eventual spiral into insanity? You don't want to miss that. Smash subscribe for eventual mental breakdown. Next NFL team up is going to be the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yes, by a hair. The Bucks get on the board. And as you can see from the map, Bucks have one way to go. It's going to be Bucks Jags. And Baker Mayfield, now a 78 overall, gets Tyreek Hill and a little bit of protection. Teron Armstead, Tristan Wirfs, of course, going back to right tackle. They're going to be a tough team to beat. But not only are the Jags a team that simulate well, they get home field advantage. So maybe Tyreek Hill makes a big difference, maybe not. Two Florida teams remain. One of them going home for good after this. Which Florida team will come out on top? I mean, we know Florida man is crazy. So far, it is the Bucks, 17-3 over the Jaguars. Now into the second half, it's not much of a game right now. 27-3, 27-9. It's just too little too late from the Jags. They make it a little bit closer. But Todd Bowles with, with another one. 30-16, Jags eliminated. Bucks continue to move on. Ooh, not a bad upgrade. Josh Allen and Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne's rated pretty highly. I didn't realize he was that high overall in the game. Uh, but they are headed to Tampa. Nice upgrade at running back. And another nice pass rusher to add to the mix as well. Going to be playing probably over Joe Tryon Shawinka. The Bucks are looking nasty. And don't look now, but Baker Mayfield's up to an 80 overall. Okay, Jags are eliminated. Bucks claiming all that space. That is the eraser. And Florida... Now in sole possession of the Buccaneers, ironically with the Pirates raiding other teams, they keep coming out on top, keep winning. And maybe not ironically so much as fittingly. That makes sense. NFL team up next is... Ooh, this was not changed. <laughs> it's the Washington... What? What are they? What are they, what are they selling? All right. Direction they are going is... Just straight north. It's going to be Commies Ravens. It really is like a 35, 40 minute drive if you want to go from the Commander Stadium to M&T Bank in Baltimore. So fitting matchup. Now, I expect the Ravens to win this one, but anything can happen. I think the Ravens, their defense is good. They have Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews. The Commanders just got shelled last night against the Bears. Now, that doesn't matter in Madden, but... I don't think the commanders simulate all that well either. I think the Ravens typically do. So it could be a tough uphill battle for the commanders, especially on the road. 
I'm taking Baltimore. But I've been wrong before in this. A couple times already. Although the Commanders are up early. 7-3 now. 14-3 over the Ravens. Are we going to see another upset? This time from a road team? Ravens trying to get back in at 24-13 Commanders though. Ravens can only get field goals. They need a touchdown and they do get one. Howell is sacked. What's new? And oh my goodness, the Commanders will punt. Ravens with the football. And the Ravens punt the ball back. And it's not a great one. 55 seconds, a lot of penalties, and another punt. It is a punt fest right now in Baltimore. What is happening? The Ravens need to get into field goal range. That clock's ticking. There's going to be no sense of urgency at all. When you jump into the game, they just forget that a football game's going on and they have to huddle for 40 minutes. The play clock isn't even moving. Wow, this is so annoying. Only 15 seconds. And they're going to go ahead and change their offense? There's 10 seconds left. You got to move. And it doesn't even matter. It's Charlie Kolar. Lamar Jackson finds his tight end. They knew what they were doing the entire time. What an unbelievable finish. The Ravens end up pulling it off. The Commanders are going home. 60-yard touchdown to the Iowa State product, Charlie Kolar. I can't believe it either. What an unbelievable finish. That is quite simply an unbelievable finish. It's hard to actually even realize that that just, just happened. That was just insanity. Ooh, big upgrade for Lamar Jackson. Terry McLaurin, who the Commanders refused to throw the ball to for some reason. Kind of bizarre. I have him on my fantasy team. I'm doing fantasy for the first year. And uh, I picked Terry McLaurin because I go, oh, he's really good. And that was a bad idea, it turns out. Because they don't throw him the ball. Bizarre. He was not even on the field some plays last night against the Commanders. I don't get it. Well, Jonathan Allen and Terry McLaurin are now Baltimore Ravens. Pretty nice. And Lamar Jackson gets an upgrade to a 93. So the commies are already out. I shouldn't even have bothered changing the name. And we are down probably, what, about 10 teams off the board? And we're headed back to Buffalo as the Buffalo Bills will be attacking to the Northwest. Gonna have to respin that. I said we'd take, like, the next closest team, but that's just, like, Canada. And there's no Toronto team yet. They're gonna go Southeast. That is... That's a little bit up for interpretation. Giants or Eagles, probably. I think Giants. I'm, I'm gonna say mostly Southeast is the Giants here. Even though you can't see them, the Bills do have Sauce Gardner now. They do have Quinn and Williams. They're starting in the depth chart. I have to make that change every single time in the main menu. But the Giants, I mean, they're, they're a football team. Man, I am a Giants fan, as you guys know. Saquon stuff behind me. And then uh, some other just, you know random autos and stuff, signatures that I've received. But I, I trade it all in for a couple more wins, man. <laughs> the Giants have been so bad this year. I, on prime time or in prime time, just watching them get smashed, not even show up. Injuries are brutal. And we'll see if they can upset the Bills. They do have home field advantage, and they do have the lead. 13-7. to seven. The Bills go ahead and take it right back. We're into the second half now. Bills go up 21-13. The Giants need to find the end zone, and they're not. They're not. 28-13, 35-13, that's going to be the game. The Giants looked like they were going to upset for a minute. You're going to see this graph at the end in the bottom right. I mean, it was close for a little while. <laughs> Giants are not a second-half team. Daniel Jer uh, Jones completed under 40% of his passes. Either any picks? Yeah, of course he did. Oh, man. Tough game. So the Giants are eliminated, and the Bills claim this, like, very bizarre chunk of space. But you know what? It's better than not having any land at all. I don't own any land. It's a really nice upgrade for the Bills as well. They don't necessarily need defensive tackle so much with Quinn and Williams now in there, but Dexter Lawrence, still a really nice player to get, and Saquon's obviously quite the upgrade over James Cook. And Josh Allen's up to a 98 overall. So what happens when he reaches a 99? He's capped off. He's as good as he's going to get, get. So one upgrade and he's going to be done. You know, unless the Bills get eliminated. And then we probably won't upgrade him very much anymore. Although, 
I'm sure he's going to be taken to the next team that he goes to. So the Bills are in a strong spot right now. Green Bay Packers up next. And you know what? If we get a north of any kind, as long as it's not... Oh, northeast, I guess, could be the Colts. Yeah, so I, we're doing whatever we get. North or northwest is going to be the Vikings. And uh, we'll see what this ends up looking like. And it might not even be north of any kind. It's going to be about just straight south. That's going to be against the Chicago Bears, I would say. Packers have the overall advantage, 83 compared to a 75. Will it matter? We've seen it not matter a lot already. And now, you know, you kind of wonder what you'd want if you were a team in this imperialism, in this risk, right? Would you want to just stick around, not get picked and last longer? Or get picked a lot and win? That's obviously the best case scenario because you can get a ton of upgrades that make you pretty much unstoppable. So if you wait a while to get picked, well, other teams have already upgraded probably and have so many more new and better players. It's a really close game here. Bears and Packers. Bears take a late lead, and it's a huge play down the field. 28 yards to Christian Watson. Jordan Love finds his new favorite wide receiver, and we'll see what the Packers can do. Same deal we've seen when we jump in. The clock just keeps ticking. However, the play clock's not moving. EA, if you're watching this, what the hell, dude? This is game-breaking if you're playing the games like this. The play clock not moving at all, yet the game clock continues to. Stupid. Unless you're saying, well, that's, that's the time where they're spotting the ball. But you're not showing that. You're showing them in the huddle. Nice throw from Love as he finds Luke Musgrave, the rookie out of Oregon State. And we'll see if the Packers can take the lead. I want to see him play for a touchdown. You know, it's kind of incredible how many good overall receivers Oregon State has produced because they're a pretty small school by power five standards at least in terms of producing NFL prospects but they have Chad Johnson Ocho Cinco right they have Brandon Cooks they have Luke Musgrave probably some others just 20 seconds to play I mean let's find the end zone 15 seconds one time out I think they're going to play for a field goal Love under pressure, rolls to his left, throws to the sideline, finds Watson. No, it's actually Jaden Reed. I thought that said a different number. Not 11, excuse me. Love from under center. Are they going to run here? They are going to run to set up the field goal. Aaron Jones changes direction, powers through a defender. But they do get their final timeout, and I imagine. And I would guess... We're going to see a field goal try, and I would guess we're going to see overtime. Is the offense going to stay on the field? No? <laughs> these, these, it's so dumb. Uh, the Bears are going to call a timeout in order to ice the kicker. I'll tell you, it can be tough sometimes to make these ice kicks. I know from experience. This kick is up and good. We're going to OT. Here in overtime. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown. What was that? A 58-yard rushing touchdown by Aaron Jones. I mean, they scored immediately. And it's going to be 4th and 15. Game on the line. I think it should be over already with regular season OT when they scored a touchdown. Just for doing, like, playoff rules. I don't know what's happening here. Yeah, let's see, let's see the coin toss again despite a touchdown already happening in overtime. Well, 4th and 15... If they don't get it, the game's over anyways. So we'll see what Justin Fields can do. Looking to step up. Maybe looking to run. He's still looking to throw, though. Goes downfield and completes the pass. It's Darnell Mooney. Money with two O's. 49 yards on 4th and 15. The Bears can still do it. I guess we're going playoff rules. Game not over yet. Fields to throw, under pressure. He's got speed, and he steps out of bounds at the 15. So he avoids the sack, but he also loses six yards, and time's not really a factor, so you just need to throw it away in that spot. Fields under pressure again. This time he looks to take off. He's got a one-on-one, -on -one and ends up being two-on-one -on -one as he dives in front. Thought he was gonna go to the outside. <laughs> nope. Third and goal from the four. Shotgun from Fields. Let's see where he goes with the football. 
Still looking to scramble all the time. Completes the pass down to the one. That's Khalil Herbert. Fourth and goal. Maybe the final play of the game. For all the marbles, if you're the Packers defense, you got to stop a touchdown. Fields drops back from under center. Looks to throw on the run and misfires for the tight end. Cole Komet. Game over. Packers win it. I mean, I think the Packers should have won it already. But I guess playoff overtime rules are coming into effect with Super Sim being broken, essentially. Because I don't think they're trying to end the game. They want to play out the overtime period. That's not how it works. Get it together, EA, please. And it's frozen now because it shouldn't even be in the game. And I can't hit start or anything. Can't do anything. The only way out of this is going to be closing the app. Fun stuff. All right, Packers moving on down, taking over Illinois and some other stuff, like maybe a little bit of Iowa, Missouri. It's kind of tough to say. I think that's Missouri that they're leaning into, but maybe a bit of Iowa up there, hard to say. But in the end, it, it just doesn't really even matter. DJ Moore, what a nice upgrade that is. What a game he had, by the way, against Chicago. If you watch my, my last Falcons franchise video, I posted my underdog picks, right? And the one that I showed in the video was a tale of some betting guy on Twitter who uh, I'm friendly with, and it did not work out. So I take responsibility for steering you wrong. But if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen my actual picks before the game that I threw up there. So if you tailed and did insurance like I did, like I said to do, you still would have made money. And I had DJ Moore to score a touchdown and DJ Moore to get all types of yards. So completely contradicting what I showed you guys in the video. So I apologize for that. But if you don't follow me on Twitter, it's your own damn fault. And Jordan Love also goes up to a 76. So the Bears are eliminated. Packers moving on. And they might be facing the Chiefs next because we just got the Chiefs. And if you see the map here, Northeast, East, it's going to be Packers Chiefs, but it also just might be a different direction. So we'll have to see what happens. And it is Northeast. It's going to be Packers Chiefs. Chiefs, though, have to go up to Green Bay. Could be tough. Chiefs, I think, are the highest overall team in the game at a 90 overall. Packers at just a 78. But the Packers at home could win, especially when you add in a couple of nice players from Chicago and get a little upgrade to Jordan Love. It's possible, at least. Green Bay, Wisconsin. Lambeau Field, AFC versus NFC. Jordan Love against Patrick Mahomes. Will we see an upset? Packers on the board first, 7-0. Chiefs only with a field goal, but their defense came up strong, but only another field goal for the Chiefs. Packers dealing with only touchdowns right now, but they are allowing a lot of field goals. Finally, a touchdown for the Chiefs. It's 19-14. The Packers have the football. And they are trying to end this game. A minute and 27 to play. They actually take the lead. DJ Moore, nine-yard touchdown. Didn't mean to jump in like that. Oh, that's a big third down conversion. Mahomes finds Sky Moore for 20. Let's jump in here. See if Mahomes and the Chiefs have what it takes. They only need a field goal. They're on the 38. They need to not lose too many yards. Send Harrison Butker out there and end the game. Easier said than done though. Do the Packers have a stop in them? We'll see. They're gonna pitch it and that's Rashawn Gary. He brings down the ball carrier in the backfield. That is a massive play for Green Bay. They try to pitch to Pacheco and Gary wasn't even gonna be blocked by two offensive linemen. Might have been a tight end in there. I didn't see the other one. One was absolutely Juwan Taylor. And now the Chiefs are going to be forced to throw. Second and 16, just one timeout remaining. They are out of field goal range here from the 43. And there are some options open. Mahomes chooses to check down to Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And he drops it. Oh my goodness, what a huge drop. I think that was Marquez who wears number 11. It's third and 16. Chiefs with another chance here. They could still get a field goal easily, but now time becomes a factor. You got to get the field goal unit out there. Uh, but they do have the timeout, so that, that maybe doesn't even matter. Never mind. But we'll see what happens here. Third and 16. Mahomes under pressure, and he has smashed Kenny Clark. 
obliterates Mahomes. Chiefs gonna have to use that final timeout and they are well out of field goal range. We might see a massive upset as the Packers could take over most of the Midwest. This might be the final play of the game. Fourth and 26 for Mahomes. They're gonna need to take a deep shot here. Mahomes stepping up, under pressure, down he goes! It's to Daryl Slayton. TJ Slayton with the sack. Sixth time Mahomes has been sacked in this game. And the Packers in victory formation have upset the Chiefs. Mahomes and the Chiefs are going home, except for this. Mahomes now is headed to Green Bay. I was waiting for that EABS where the Chiefs just managed to come out on top, but it never happened. Packers defense stepped up and it's going to have to be the craziest upset of this NFL imperialism here in Madden 24. I don't know how you get crazier than that. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it is. What is the craziest upset possible left? The Texans over the Cowboys? But even, even then, that's not as crazy as the Packers beating the Chiefs here. In Madden, with the way the Chiefs tend to simulate, what a win for Green Bay. And they've taken over a ton of space. Look at that. The USA is Green Bay. A ton of space, but they have a long way to go. Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are headed to the Packers. So the Jordan Love era kind of ends prematurely here, but what are you going to do? You have the opportunity to add Patrick Mahomes. We're hyping up Luke Musgrave, but he's no Travis Kelsey. At least not yet. Probably not ever. Maybe. Maybe, but you pretty much have to become the best receiving tight end of all time, which is going to be tough to do. Next team up is the Atlanta Falcons. First time we've seen them today. They've kind of just been lasting. But, uh... If they have to take on the Bucs, it could be tough. And the direction they're going to be going is north. And that is facing the Tennessee Titans. I know they're to their, their west here, but this weird chunk is Tennessee. And I'm sure you haven't forgotten, but Joe Burrow is on the Titans now. And the Titans also added, was it Marshawn Lattimore? Yeah, and Tyron Matthew. Is he playing free safety? He is. Titans still just a 77 overall, even with Joe Burrow, Tyron Matthew, Marshawn Lattimore, Jamar Chase. Kind of weird, but okay. Now, I will say the Falcons are a team that does extremely well in simulation. So this might not be cut and dry here for Tennessee, but they've done a really good job in these games already, and they are destroying the Falcons. It's 21-0. Falcons finally with the score here in the second half, but the Titans not really doing a whole lot of slowing down. 24-14 now, 31-14. It's just too little too late by Atlanta. You know, a bunch of second half touchdowns, but it's not going to be enough when you're down by as much as they were at halftime. No points at halftime, or maybe, maybe three, right? But I know they couldn't add three because they have 21 points. So yeah, I think it was, I think it was, what, 21-0? Something like that. I think Kevin Byard might have been starting at slot corner. I don't know why he wasn't where he needed to be last game. Didn't end up mattering. Titans just crushed them anyway, but kind of weird. Who can we trade that isn't Daniel Brunskill? They have no offensive line depth, pretty much. And Joe Burrow goes up to a 98 overall. Falcons are done. And Tennessee is moving on over and in. Why do I keep doing that? Just 17 teams remain, which means the loser of this next game will officially mark half the league being eliminated. The Philadelphia Eagles are the first team, and the direction they will go is to their southwest. This is the first time we've seen the Eagles, and it's going to be Eagles-Ravens. All right, let's see another upset. The Ravens added Terry McLaurin. They added Jonathan Allen. The Eagles are very good, though, but so are the Ravens. Back in Baltimore, we had seen the Ravens defend this turf once already. The Commanders tried to attack them, couldn't get it done, and now the Eagles want a little bit of action. The next team from the north taking a chance, and they are up 7-3. Ravens take the lead 10-7. As we approach halftime, it is still 10-7 into the second half. Now 14-10 Eagles end of the third quarter. Ravens, just a field goal, can't take the lead. And the Eagles have the football. And the Eagles looking to win this game and do. 14-13 final. 
Looks like Lamar was just stopped on a fourth down attempt and they are going home. And we'll see who the Ravens are going to give to the Eagles. Not Lamar Jackson, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. When it's, you know, two close quarterbacks or a team that really just doesn't need a quarterback, I'm going to do the next ones. Like, just for the sake of a little bit more team continuity. But it actually doesn't even matter. Because Lamar Jackson is not a top two rated player on the Ravens. Mark Andrews and Roquan Smith are headed to... Philly. Roquan Smith is a really nice grab. Another Georgia player for the Eagles. Good Lord. Their entire defense is Georgia. Look at safety. Nobody there. But I think it starts at corner, right? Keely Ringo. Outside linebacker. Well, maybe at middle linebacker. They have N'Kobe Dean. Georgia. Left outside linebacker. Nolan Smith. Georgia. Jalen Carter. Georgia. Jordan Davis. Georgia. Anything at defensive end? No, but that, that's, a, that's a lot of Georgia. And they definitely don't need tight end, but it's good to have another one. Also, did I see Albert Okwabenom on the Eagles? Is that where he is now? The big O is in Philly? Okay, something, something here seems a little bit off. Can't quite put my finger on it. But does that look like Albert Okwabenom to you guys? All right, I guess it does. I guess that's close enough. He has not played a game for the Eagles, but I guess he's with the Eagles now. I didn't hear this. I'm a big, big O guy. Jalen Hurts now up to a 90. I'm thinking the Eagles are probably the new team to beat. They just got even better. Two of their top three players were guys they didn't even have before that win. All right, Ravens are done. A different bird team moving on down. The Philadelphia Eagles expanding to the south. Next team up is the Minnesota Vikings. I feel like it's been a decent minute since we've seen them. Is that Broncos game, right? And their direction will be Northwest. So that's going to be Vikings Seahawks, right? I mean, it's got to be. Vikings Seahawks up next. Oh, and remember the Vikings added Patrick Sertan and Justin Simmons. Good receivers in, in Seattle, though. Vikings at an 81 overall. Seahawks at an 81 overall. Could be interesting. Here at what is formerly CenturyLink, at Lumen Field now. Not a lot of action going on already. Second half, just 10 total points scored. Seahawks now raise their total to 10. Now 13 to 7. Vikings can only muster a field goal. They need big time points. There's a touchdown to make it 17-13. Seahawks are driving though. First and 20. We're going to see what Geno can do. I mean, he's moving the ball right now. Finds Noah Fant for 15. And he's trying to hurry everybody up. The clock's not moving, Geno. You're fine. 43 seconds to play. First and 20 for Geno Smith. Maybe calling a hot at the line. He's going to throw quickly down the field. Nobody near Tyler Lockett. Well, that wasn't Patrick Sertan's side. That much is obvious. Timeout Seattle. That's a big chunk play. Another first down. This time first and 10. As supposed to first and 15 for the Seahawks post penalty. It was a first and 20. Either way, it doesn't matter now. Seahawks driving, looking to upset the Vikings here at home, at home in Seattle, obviously. Geno throwing to the sideline. Findings at Jackson Smith and Jigba, it's Jake Bobo. Jackson a little bit darker of a complexion. I thought I saw the number though, but that's okay. Jake Bobo for 12. Seattle letting this clock tick. They still have a timeout. They're going no huddle. We are down to 15 seconds. Gino from the gun. He's been throwing really quickly, but now just checks down, and the Seahawks are forced to use their final timeout. And you'd think the Seahawks have to throw to the end zone here, but it's mad, and you never know. They could check down and have it just be short of the end zone and end the game. Here's Gino, and that's exactly what he does, but... Noah Fant gets out of bounds. They get like a yard or two. No, maybe they're on the eight. Maybe they get four yards. It's third and four now from the four. Six seconds to play. You got one, maybe two plays. Definitely no more than two on third and four. You got to get to the end zone. I mean, this is this is probably your final snap. Gino drops back to throw. Throws sideline. And they lose a yard. You got to throw it to the end zone. We will see one more play. Fourth and five from the five. Might as well be fourth and goal. That's what this is. 
you need six yards. Final play of the game, no matter what. Here's Gino. You got to throw it to the end zone. Incomplete. The Vikings with the goal line stand essentially to end this one here in Seattle. They stopped them. They set that barrier on the goal line. Didn't let anybody through. Great defense from the Vikings, but also terribly done from Seattle. Didn't take really any shots to the end zone. Just settled for checkdowns to lose yards. Really back and forth game. I don't know if I've ever seen, you know, a chart like that. Looks like a DNA strand. Vikings come out on top, though. You know, another receiver is nice to add with Justin Jefferson. Bobby Wagner, nice upgrade alongside Jordan Hicks. But the Vikings just miss out, uh, missed out on Kenneth Walker, who would be a massive upgrade over Cam Akers and Alexander Madison. But doesn't end up happening. However, Kirk Cousins will get a plus two upgrade to an 88 overall. He's having a very good season, as Kirk Cousins always does statistically. And these boosts are certainly helping him out as well. This Vikings team continues to look really nice. But by the way the Titans have played, uh, who's beating the Titans? I don't know. I feel like the Titans have just crushed everybody. So it'd be really tough to pick against them right now. But look at the Vikings. Northwest expansion. I mean, they have, they have control over the entire region pretty much. It's just the Raiders standing in their way of the entire Pacific Northwest, and it's just a little bit of chunk in Oregon right there. But I don't think the Raiders are going to hold on to that for much longer. Or we see another upset, and the Vikings, just like that, could be done. Next team up is going to be the Carolina Panthers, another team that we have not used so far. They've just kind of been hanging out in the southeastern United States. And we're going to see who the Panthers are going to play for the first time. They're going straight west, and that is taking on what seems to be a juggernaut so far in this imperialism. It is the Tennessee Titans, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Marshawn Lattimore, Tyron Matthew, a bunch of really good players on this Tennessee team already. Now, despite being only a 78 overall, the Panthers are a team that generally simulates extremely well. So even though the Titans have been crushing it, the Panthers could be the team to beat. Even so, they pick up Joe Burrow, which would be a huge upgrade over Bryce Young right now in the game. And is it Derrick Henry? It probably is, right? Now, it is going to be tough for the Panthers, though. They have to go into hostile territory to take on a red-hot Tennessee team, and that's exemplified by the Flames on the Titans logo. It is 7-7. Panthers take the lead here in the second quarter, and we have seen a lot of upsets in this Imperialism tournament. 14-14 as we approach the fourth quarter. Panthers had the lead 21-14. Now 28-14. 21-28. The Titans are going to need to stop. Third and eight becomes fourth and two. And the Panthers punt the ball to the Titans. There will be a chance. Burrow sacked by Brian Burns is not going to help. But a big gain. Derrick Henry out of the backfield. Let's jump in here. This is the final drive. Clock's ticking, and now they don't have the benefit of uh, of this clock because we're going to see this glitch out for a bit. But we had to jump in. 45 seconds from the 31-yard line. Titans need to move the ball in a hurry. Burrow throwing over the middle, finding a receiver. As they're quickly to the 44, that's Jamar Chase who's stopping to celebrate. you got to figure out what the situation is. There's 30 seconds left to go in the game. They need to start getting some animations where they catch the ball, hurry the ball to the line, and snap the football. There's just 20 seconds left. The Titans are on the verge of going home. They need a big play right now. Burrow with plenty of time. He's kind of forcing pressure on himself by not getting rid of the football and then finally just throws it away. That might have just sealed their fate. Burrow throwing deep down the sideline incomplete. Last play of the game. It's going to take a Hail Mary. We've seen it happen before, but Burrow, I mean... He's not going to scramble here. What is happening? There's zero seconds on the clock, and he takes off. You idiot. The Titans have indeed been upset by Carolina. I mean, it's just... It's it's just dumb Madden stuff on the final drive. That's all there is. Didn't even make it competitive. Stupid, but... The Panthers have knocked off the Panthers, and are start... Or the tit Panthers have knocked off the Titans, and are going to claim a lot of territory. We're going to swap to a slightly different shade of blue here. This is... Maybe the biggest change we've seen so far. 
Oh my goodness, because, I mean, the Titans just continually kept winning, and that's just been stopped suddenly by the Panthers. Look at all this free real estate. This Panthers better get absolutely massive in the heart of the Southeast. The Bucks could still take them out, but as I mentioned, this is a team that simulates extremely well. You know, there's a reason that they're such a low overall yet are consistently in like the NFC Championship game and first year simulations in franchise mode. They're just really, really good in sim. Good defense and their playbook is set up for Christian McCaffrey. So the running back eats out of the backfield as a receiver and of course as a runner as well. And now you're thinking, well, Christian McCaffrey hasn't been on the Panthers for a little while now. It doesn't matter. They haven't changed it. Haven't fixed anything. So it is going to be Joe Burrow and Derrick Henry moving on. The thing with this though, is that there are so many good players that the Titans stole that would, you know, make a juggernaut type team. And they're just going to be stuck forever on the Titans who are now out of the NFL in this tournament. Ryan Burns, Derek Brown, get a little bit of help here. And Derek Henry is quite the upgrade over Miles Sanders in the game. It's a 95 overall versus an 81. Derek Henry is now going to have like 10 catches a game. Running backs really matter, in my opinion, for simulation. I probably need to start valuing them a little bit higher in rebuilds. But yeah, Derrick Henry is going to eat in this Carolina offense. And I know he's not a big receiving back in real life. Has caught the football more recently uh, than he used to. But he's going to eat, I promise you. And Joe Burrow also gets the boost to the 99 club. Panthers, I know I keep saying this, new team to beat. Could be the Panthers. So the Titans run has come to an end. They are off the wheel. Hold on, let's do this. And we will spin again as we start to really narrow it down to the final group of 10 or 15. It's the Indianapolis Colts again. They're going to have to attack, so they have a slight disadvantage here, but they have been pretty good so far beating some of these teams. And they're going to have to go to the Southwest to take on... That's a tough judgment call. Whether it's the Packers or the Panthers now. What would you call the Southwest? I mean... I almost want to say that South, more true South, is to the Panthers. This is where people are going to disagree with me. I think Southwest should be the Packers here. It's just a weird kind of thing going on with the Kentucky border. I'm going to make it be the Packers. It just feels more true Southwest, the direction of the arrow. It just depends where you draw it from. I don't know. This is this is a tough call. I might even call for a respin because I think Southwest is like on the border. I'm kind of doing it from the southwest border. I'm just going to respin. Just make it so there's no confusion or anything about which way they're going. Now they want to go north. That's nothing. How about west or east? Or straight west. So it is going to be the Packers after all. Oh yeah, and the Packers have Patrick Mahomes now. That is a tough matchup to draw for the Colts. Now here's the thing. I know people are going to say it should have been the Panthers. Maybe it should have been. But I think it was just too close of a call. We might as well just respin. Packers and Patrick Mahomes out to an early 7-0 lead. Colts answer right back. But I think this Packers offense is going to be very tough to stop. Could be a lot of points scored in this game. But a good stop from the Colts. And they end up tying it up. Now into the second half. The Colts are going to need to get it going. Because this offense from the Packers does not seem to be stopping. But Richardson finds Michael Pittman for a 6-yard touchdown. And now we're going to see a Patrick Mahomes drive here. And the Packers are moving. Let's go ahead and jump in here and see if the Packers can find the end zone. One minute to play. Are they just going to play for a field goal? It's second and 13. Colts out of timeouts. Saw the Packers win in a very familiar fashion. Very similar to what this is. They might get themselves out of field goal range. DeForest Buckner in the backfield making a great play. And with the injury, strategic maybe, as Shaq Leonard goes down, we are able to stop the clock. Third and 16. I don't I don't know how the Packers are going to play this. You need a couple of yards to really get into field goal range. And they go read option. Mahomes is brought down. They only got a yard. The play clock and the game clock are separated by just six and a half seconds. So if the Packers get the football back, or if the Colts get the football back, excuse me, it probably is not going to be enough to matter. So this field goal from Anders Carlson will be a big one. It is a 54-yarder. Essentially, for the win, kick up and good. The Packers drill it on the leg of Anders Carlson. The Colts will have five seconds to get into field goal range. It's just not going to be enough. Doesn't really exist here. They're going to need 
a kick to go out of bounds. <laughs> and then even then, I don't know if they have enough. They got to get a quick throw to the outside, which doesn't really exist in Madden. They're essentially going to need a kickoff return touchdown. I think the Colts' run here is going to come to an end. They had a great, great run. Won a couple more games than I thought they would. Young rookie quarterback, very low rated in Madden right now. Probably going to be near an 80 if he keeps playing it up by the season's end. But it's just probably too tough of a task. I think we're going to see Miles Garrett, at least, head to the Packers. Five seconds to go. Here is the game. Will we see a return? We will. They're going to need to house it. And they'll have one final shot. I don't think it'll be enough. Richardson going to need to make magic happen. Just not sure there's enough magic for the Colts to win this thing. Richardson sack. That's the game. Preston Smith gets home again. Second sack of the game. Packers win it. Colts eliminated. Packers moving on over. Yeah, they claimed everything. The Packers have the entire world now. So it's going to be Miles Garrett and Quinton Nelson heading over to the Packers in this deal, in the swap. Patrick Mahomes is already 99, so we're not going to upgrade him. But Elton Jenkins starts currently at left guard, so it's probably going to be Quentin Nelson taking over on that right side. You know, it's incredibly annoying. We're getting to a point where cap room is becoming an issue. I don't know why that's the case on the main menu, where cap really shouldn't matter at all. This is not a franchise. Anyway, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the choice, and I really think they can only go one direction. It's Bucks Panthers coming up next. Bucks have the advantage on paper. We know the Panthers are going to be very good. Wow, Panthers scored nearly instantly. And it's 10-0. Bucks on the board, 10-7. Interception by Devin White, but the Bucks can't get anything off it. They do end up taking the lead here in the second half, 14-10. Very low scoring game, very defensive game so far. Panthers with a field goal, but it won't be enough. A minute to play. Third and one. Can Joe Burrow actually end up making the plays that he needs to this time? He had the benefit of going from the Titans to the Panthers when the Titans lost after, of course, the Bengals lost. I'm sensing kind of a trend here. Joe Burrow is kind of losing a lot of these games. Not saying it's him, but it is true. He has already lost three games in this tournament and just keeps powering through. Credit to him. He, he, he's losing and losing and losing and managing to stay in this tournament. Third and one out of the gun. Joe Burrow throws to the flat, finds the tight end Hayden Hurst for the first down. And if I do Imperialism again, should I do it where quarterbacks are not allowed to swap teams? I think keeping the upgrades could be cool. But that might be a way to do it so that we don't just see the same high-rated quarterbacks at the end of this thing, where it's just Joe Burrow versus Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, you know, whoever. The usual suspects, Aaron Rodgers even, although I think he's like an 86 overall. Not, or 85, and he's hurt, so it doesn't even matter at the point uh, that I'm making this video. Panthers content to just run the football here. I think they're playing for the field goal. Bucks don't have any timeouts now. Can't stop the clock after they just did. So, I'm thinking the Panthers are just going to kick the game-winning field goal and send the Bucks home. Panthers would add Tyreek Hill, and I think Trent Williams is on the Bucks. How would that be possible? How did the... 49ers play the Bucks. I don't I'm it, it can't be Trent Williams unless I really made a mistake Trent Williams no Trent Williams is on the Raiders with Colton Miller I, it's Teron Armstead is the tackle I, I had a bit of a brain fart I recorded that several hours ago now I'm coming back and uh <laughs> I knew they got a sick left tackle I just forgot who exactly it was, and I said someone that made no sense as Burrow finds Hayden Hurst again in the end zone. Well, as nice as it is to get a touchdown in that spot, here's why it might be an issue. You give the football back to the Bucks. I know 32 seconds and no timeouts is not a lot of time to work with, but now the Bucks actually have a chance. In Madden, it won't matter, probably. In real life, though, I think you probably just play for the field goal if you feel confident in your kicker. Just try to get a 30-yarder up instead of throwing shots to the end zone. I don't know. Obviously, block field goals, miss field goals, these things happen. But, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you would do. Take the touchdown and say, you know what, the Bucks with 32 seconds and no timeouts are not going to be able to score. In Madden, I agree with you. But in real life, I mean, are you just not inviting the possibility of something bad to happen? I don't know. 
Baker with plenty of time. I don't know why these quarterbacks are just freaking out in clean pockets. It's so strange. Fourth and 10, just 12 seconds to play. See if the Bucks can do anything. See if Baker Mayfield can get the win. This is going to end up going out on Saturday. The former Oklahoma quarterback throws an interception. And I hope I see Dylan Gabriel, the current Oklahoma quarterback, throw an interception. Hook him. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, Texas has beat Oklahoma in the Red River Showdown. If they haven't, know that I will be so sad. That is all. And the Panthers are moving on. Bucks are eliminated. Goodbye, Bucks. And the Panthers have... They're not going to move. They're just claiming all of Florida. Next team up is the LA Rams. This is another team we've not seen so far. Both of the Southern California teams... Um, I guess both LA teams. We don't have to be that fancy with it. We have not seen the Rams or the Chargers, funnily enough, but they are finally being picked. And the Rams are going straight south. That's the Chargers. Wow, the Rams are 74 overall to the Chargers 86. Let's see what happens. Here in Inglewood, California, the Battle of LA. Is that a movie? I think it is. I think The Rock's probably in it because that sounds right to me. Chargers up 21-28-7. I spoke too soon into the second half. Yeah, it's done for the Rams. If they came back to win, I'll give away a signed jersey of a choice in the chat. Well, it, it, it's not going to happen. Well, sorry about that. 42-14. <laughs> I don't really want to give it away. I got to... I saved my money. We are rescuing Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. They're going to change locker rooms and head to the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a no-brainer upgrade. <laughs> Morgan Fox for Aaron Donald. And they don't really need receivers that badly. Um, but it'll be Simi Vahoko for Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup is injured, so never mind. I absolutely forgot about that somehow, even though he's not played a snap here in 2023 Tyler Higby or Rob Havenstein take the tackle and oh, Jesus it's like not even fair for the Rams they're just completely outgunned outmanned outmatched and the Chargers are moving in we don't really even need to change the color of this kind of fits already but you know what we will anyway got to keep it consistent and then there were 12 still a decent amount of teams remaining and finally, we land on the Seattle Seahawks. I haven't really seen much of them. Oh, because they're eliminated. That's right. And there were 11. I knew at some point I would forget to take somebody out of the wheel. We are back to the Carolina Panthers. And they have a number of different directions they could go. Uh, I'm going to say probably anything west is just the Cowboys. Southwest, maybe the Texans. It's uh, probably still the Cowboys. I don't know. I'm just going to hope it's not West. North is going to be Green Bay. Northeast is going to be Philadelphia. Northwest, probably still Green Bay. And here we go. We'll see which direction we're going. Southeast. Okay, dude. The one direction we're... We're going to attack the Atlantic Ocean. Come on. Here we go. The one direction I didn't really want to deal with, which is Southwest. Um... Texans, I guess. I mean, there's a sliver there. We're going to call it the Texans. How nice of an upgrade is Tyreek Hill into this offense? Panthers could actually throw the ball now if they wanted to, which I don't think they do. They have Derrick Henry. First time we've seen the Texans in this as well. Not a whole lot to take from them, honestly. I want to say I'd be surprised if I saw them win here. Jimmy Ward. I mean, Will Anderson Jr. is there. He surely is not the second highest rated player in the Texans right now. He can't be. I would say Jimmy Ward. I mean, Will Anderson definitely could be higher overall than Derek Stingley for sure. Laramie Tunsil would be the highest rated. It's going to be Jimmy Ward and Laramie Tunsil. Those are probably the two. I mean, the Texans are on the board first. And they actually have the lead. And they're going to extend the lead. This would be an unbelievable upset at this point. Panthers trying to fight back in it into the third quarter. Panthers finally grab the lead. I think the Texans have kind of slow down enough but they do end up scoring and I think they're just down by too much it was a one possession game they couldn't allow the Panthers to score and they allowed the Panthers to score and that was pretty much it 
Close game. They played it way, way, way better than I would have expected. But I think the Panthers in the end were just too talented. Yep, it is Tunsil and Jimmy Ward. I know a Tunsil should have popped in my head earlier, but I was kind of more thinking of defensive players and not the offensive line either. But we uh, we got there in the end. And uh, the Panthers don't really need a left tackle so badly with Teron Armstead. Iki Iquanu in there as well. But with Brady Christensen injured, it could probably be Iquanu to left guard or center even. Corbett's injured. So you need a, a right tackle. Taylor Moten's played guard before. I don't know. It's just getting another really talented offensive lineman in there. They're not going to complain about it. But definitely have some more immediate needs. It's going to be a very interesting new border creation here. Just taking a sliver. I know some people are going to be mad about this move into the Southwest to take on the Texans. But I think ultimately it just made the most sense with the direction of the arrow. And I mean, they just... In all honesty, couldn't stick around forever. It was just such a small sliver. In hindsight, I should have just changed the map to have the Texans take up more of that area. But, um, I mean, the, the Saints were there. I needed to push them up a little bit. The border would have been so weird. I don't know. Also, I like how it says Houston, Texas. That's fun. That's where I live. <laughs> Didn't pop up. Dallas Cowboys, though, do pop up. Which way are the Dallas Cowboys going? They can pretty much go any direction here but southwest and they end up going northeast to me that's the green bay packers this should be a pretty even matchup i'm honestly gonna tell you i wouldn't be mad about a cowboys win because this salary cap issue with the packers is going to end up being a problem i'm doing my best to work around it when i add these new guys in but simply you can't do this in franchise because you can't pick the matchups right and on the main menu, apparently there's a salary cap that plays a factor, which I've never dealt with before, but we're actively having to deal with it. Cowboys simulate really, really well, but not against Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey on this Packers team. It is a slaughter right now. The Cowboys are fighting back suddenly out of nowhere. It was a one possession game and it's, it is again. The Cowboys have the football. The Cowboys have taken the lead. This is insanity in Green Bay. Oh my goodness. Brian Anger and the Cowboys are going to have to punt. And Mahomes and the Packers going into a big drive. And it's two back-to-back -back massive plays as Mahomes finds Christian Watson for a long touchdown. And we are going to jump in here. Back-to-back six-yard rushes from Dak Prescott. My game just froze, dude. Oh, no. It saved. Okay. It saved. And it actually seems to have fixed this uh, annoying game clock running, but play clock not running issue. Leaving the game. Although it stops the clock for no reason, apparently. But the Cowboys have the ball in the 47. Field goal ties it. I hope they play for a touchdown. Check down and a big hit from Jair Alexander. There is the kicker. I probably would have called a timeout there if I were Dallas. Second and five, 45 seconds now. No real sense of urgency. Do they care about winning this game? Evidently not. Seems like they're probably just playing for a field goal. 35 seconds now. Play action. Dak to the sideline. I thought that could have been intercepted. Timeout, Dallas. It's Jake Ferguson to the 38. Dak from the gun. Has a receiver over the middle and hits him. Dak Prescott, touchdown. Finds a receiver on a crosser, maybe even an over route, which is essentially the same thing, but deep, right? And that is a Brandon Cooks touchdown. The Cowboys take the lead late in what has been a thrilling game where it seems like they were out of it and the Packers have completely choked this lead away. They had an angle on Cooks, but completely lost it. Brandon Cooks just way too fast. And that is a Cowboys touchdown and maybe a Cowboys dagger. The Packers will need a touchdown. Nothing else will do. And they have less than 30 seconds to do it. I don't envy their situation. Oh, dart from Mahomes. They have a timeout as well. And just like that, the Packers have the football on the 46-yard line. 17 seconds, two timeouts to work with. Nice of Mahomes hit that corner route. Really, really quick. A lot of yards and a very quick timeout as well. Second and three, 12 seconds to go. 
Mahomes out of the gun, throws over the middle. I think the pass was intended for a receiver. I think it was DJ Moore. Aaron Jones got in front of it and essentially played the role of defensive back. Knocked the football away. And that, that could seal the fate of the Green Bay Packers. Oh my goodness. Because you probably have run after catch opportunities there. Ooh, I don't know. Mahomes throws over the middle. I mean, they're going to call a timeout. They're going to have a shot to the end zone here. But it could have been from about 20 yards instead of 35 if Aaron Jones doesn't knock that pass down. Because it was open. And the Packers have played this, I mean, about as conservatively as they could to be in this spot. But now they're going to have to take a shot to the end zone. Two by twos on the outside. Aaron Jones probably in the block. Maybe on a block and release. And Mahomes will lob to the end zone. Here it is. Game on. And the game is over. Mahomes throws for 452 as well as three touchdowns. But with the game on the line, nobody can come up with a football or come down with it. And the Packers are going home upset by the Cowboys. But you've watched any video on the channel so far this year in terms of rebuilds or played the game yourself. You know the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl every year. They probably have the best overall playbooks in the game. They just don't lose. I know I said I wouldn't give a quarterback if they were comparable. But it is Patrick Mahomes, though. What's Dak? Dak's up to an 89. Is that comparable? It's Patrick Mahomes. I'm conflicted. I'm just going to throw in Patrick Mahomes. He's a 99 overall. I think that's a big enough jump to where it makes sense. It's Patrick Mahomes. A lot of craziness. I think I think trading Mahomes over was the right move. Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know if we've seen them either. Now, they just have that little spot. I think the Patriots and Steelers have both not popped up. And then we'll see where the Steelers are going. Bills, Eagles, Packers, and Panthers are realistic options. And they're going to the Northeast. That is the Bills. Steelers, 79 overall. Bills, 86, if you think that matters. But you got to remember, the Bills have Saquon Barkley and Dexter Lawrence and Sauce Gardner and Quinnen Williams. It's a really good team. And who would the Bills be adding here? TJ Watt and Minka, probably? Minka Fitzpatrick. And it, this game might be over already. It's 14, now 21 to 3. Steelers with a quick drive, but they don't get any points. It's 28 to 3 going into the half. And surely a team has never come back from that before. Certainly not in the Super Bowl against Matt Ryan and Dan Quinn. Uh, this game is over. 45 10. Falcons fans stay catching strays. Yeah, Kenny Pickett didn't have it. The Bills with just the strangest region here. <laughs> Looks like a sphinx for the Philadelphia territory underneath it. All right, Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick are indeed the number of players going over. I'm going to take out A.J. Epineza and trade over an outside linebacker. Tyler Matakiewicz. Kind of forgot he's still in the league. Is he a cowboy? Yeah, he was a Steeler and went to Temple. I was not even close. All right, Steelers are out of it. And the Eagles are up next. This is another one of those teams to beat, potentially. The Eagles, just Bills. I'll give you Packers if it's Northwest. It is, wow. Just realized I forgot to take the Packers out of it. The Packers are done, dude. They had their run, but unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but it, it is the Cowboys' time in this imperialism, and I figured they would be one of the last teams standing. They're just very good. All right, wheel is spinning, and we're going back out to the West. It's the LA Chargers, and they could play the, either the Cowboys or the Raiders. Nothing West, please. It's going to be ooh, East, but a touch to the South. That's the Cowboys. And don't worry, I remember to give Justin Herbert his plus two overall to a 92. I'd love to see the Chargers pull off the upset, but it's just going to be tough to upset a team like the Cowboys that simulates so well. However, the Chargers did just annihilate the Rams, who I get are super low rated, but they did annihilate them. They're clearly going to be pretty good. They have more talent now. Aaron Donald for one, but it's still going to be a tough matchup, especially going into Dallas, into Arlington at Jerry's World here. Chargers scored instantly. The Cowboys answered and took the lead pretty much instantly as well. We're into the second half. 
Chargers haven't scored since, but they finally get a point back on the board. It's a touchdown, and there's so much happening. Chargers are going to end up losing 31-17. They were uh, not our last hope, but they were a team that really could have, you know, stood a chance to take out the Cowboys, and they didn't. So it's going to be really, really tough for a team to beat the Cowboys now. Vikings and Panthers, even the Eagles, have decent shots, obviously. But the Cowboys just simulate so well. I think the Panthers could do it. I worry about the Eagles. I worry about the Vikings. I think the Panthers could do it. Well, Aaron Donald and Derwin James are now headed to the Dallas Cowboys. It's a really, really nice addition to their defense. And, I mean, they could use an upgraded safety for sure. Derwin James is a big one. And then we're probably going to convert uh, Aaron Donald to defensive tackle. Also, I don't know. Why is Chauncey Golston listed at defensive tackle? He Does he really play defensive tackle for the Cowboys? That's shocking. He was drafted as a defensive end out of Iowa. And he's only 268 pounds. So it it seems bizarre that he would be playing defensive tackle in a 4-3 a defense. Weird. All right, Chargers are dead. I think it was kind of only a matter of time for them. It's just, it's too tough of a task to beat this Chargers team, honestly. Or Cowboys, what? Cowboys looking like the Mason-Dixon line right here, separating the North and the South. It's not quite on the same line. That would go like through there, but uh, yeah, it's I'm gonna call it that. I don't know what devil magic Bill Belichick has going on, but the Patriots have yet to be picked and we are almost to the end. That could change here. As the Buffalo Bills, all they need to do is, I'll, I'll say anything to a northern direction or east, is going to be the Patriots. Do we finally see the Patriots play? We do. That counts. That is the Patriots. I do think it would have been really funny to see the Patriots just not play a game until the very, very end and then win the whole thing on one game. But it's nice for you Patriots fans to finally see your team do something in this video. They've been hiding up there the entire time. And finally, they're going to be thrown right into the fire, taking on a very talented Buffalo Bills team. They have a number of reinforcements up to this point, and it's going to be really tough for the Bills to win, Get a, or for the Patriots to win, excuse me. 10-0 Buffalo. Patriots with a touchdown, though, and they're kind of subduing the Bills' offense a little bit here. Only one touchdown allowed so far. There's a second, and there is the third, just as I said it. I am the Jinx. 31-13 will be your final. Patriots knocked out. Bills moving on. And I don't even know who the Patriots' highest rated players would be. Matthew Judon. Probably Matt Judon. Hunter Henry. David Andrews. Oh, I don't even know who it would be. Ooh, Kyle Duggar's up to an 85. Matt Judon's hurt, so he can't be traded. It's going to be Kyle Duggar and Trent Brown. Jabril Peppers, 84 overall. Very interesting. Very interesting. These would not be the two I would have guessed, to be honest. But, I mean, they're good. So, it's, I'm not saying it's stupid. I just kind of slipped my mind, I guess. Patriots are dead. And the Bills are moving on in. They continue their extremely weird-looking border. I don't know. What does this even look like? I don't know. It looks like a rabbit, maybe? Ears at the top, right? There's the face. There's the body. A little weird curled toe. I, I don't know, man. Just six teams remain. And the Dallas Cowboys will be attacking. The direction the Cowboys are going is to the east-ish. I mean, is that the Bills or is that the Panthers? To me... It's got a slight kind of north edge to it. I'm going to say that lines up to Buffalo. That makes sense to me. We also had to boost Josh Allen up to a 99 overall, so that's done. 88 overall against 88 overall. Cowboys, Bills. This could be the team that dethrones the Cowboys. The Buffalo Bills could be the team that gets it done. TJ Watt now on the team as well. Minka, Saquon, Dexter Lawrence. Some of the guys we talked about earlier, Sauce Gardner, Quinn and Williams. This is a really, really good team with home field advantage. Obviously playing a really, really tough team to beat. We know that we've seen that enough from the Cowboys. But I think the Bills could be the team that gets it done here at home. Cowboys used to playing in a dome. 
Got to go outside in Buffalo, no less. The Bills should have an advantage, but here they are down 14, now 9, going into the half. 14-9 still. Cowboys extended 17-9, but the Bills answer right away. Tie things up at 17 and take the lead 24-17, but the Cowboys answer right back and make it 24-24. Cowboys now with a field goal to go up by three points on a Brandon Aubrey field goal. All right. Bills final drive. No timeouts. 47 seconds to get into field goal range at the very least. We'll see if they can do it. I don't know why the Bills didn't get out of bounds. They threw a pass to the flat and just didn't get out of bounds. Second and three from the 30. Allen throwing down the field. Gabe Davis breaking tackles, but that might be the game. 10 seconds remain. Nine, eight. This one's going to be over. The Bills are not going to be able to line up in time. They're going to need a miracle spike, and I just don't think it's going to happen. That's the game. Cowboys come out on top. Win by a field goal. The Bills just, I mean, what are you doing on that final drive? How are you just not going to get out of bounds? Insane. I mean, the Bills just, they deserve to lose after that. That was incredibly stupid. And it's just, it, as I've said, it, it is typical like Madden BS. But you got to be able to get out of bounds in those spots. And Cowboys now are taking over literally coast to coast. Doesn't really make sense to trade over Josh Allen when Patrick Mahomes is already there. So Stefan Diggs and TJ Watt are going to be headed to the Cowboys. I mean, their pass rush is going to be out of control, but the Cowboys don't have nearly the cap space. Patrick Mahomes is causing problems everywhere. We're going to trade over TJ Watt. This, oh man, it's, it's so difficult to work around the cap room here. And then we're dealing with the injured players as well, the position minimums. Ah, it's so annoying. All right, finally got it to work here. Bill's having the... Give me an outside linebacker back or something, please. I won't be able to work. I got to sign an outside linebacker to the Bills first and then do it. Oh, my God. Where's the figure it out button? It's so annoying. There we go. All right, TJ Watt officially has made it to the Cowboys. <laughs> they have four 99 overall players. A 98, a 97, a 96... A 94, several 92s. Very good team. Bills are out of it. We are down to just five teams. And the Raiders are finally up again. We saw them at the start of this thing. They were one of the first teams to get picked. And then we have not seen them since. It has been quite some time. And they're going to the Southeast. I'm going to call that the Cowboys. The Cowboys are just eating up teams right now. Cowboys might be taking down the Raiders next. Cowboys are an 89 overall with Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Donald, and Travis Kelsey. Good luck to the Raiders. You will need it. And then good luck to me if the Cowboys win trying to get these contracts to work. Because it's going to be what? McCaffrey and Devontae Adams to the Cowboys? There's no way I'm going to be able to make that work with the salary cap. Like, absolutely no way. So, please, please Raiders, <laughs> please win... Pull off the home upset, I beg you. Because then we're going to have to start trading good players from the Cowboys in order to make the uh, salary cap work. And it's not looking good for the Raiders. It's 14, now 17, nothing. More probably. Oh, Raiders find the end zone. And get a stop. And find the end zone again. Oh my goodness, and they have the football. Jimmy G's driving. Oh, don't let Jimmy, Jimmy G get hot. Don't let Jimmy G get hot. They are on the 20-yard line. Just over a minute to play. Please score a touchdown. I beg you, pull off the nastiest upset of the video. We've seen a bunch of big ones. And I said earlier, I'm like, all right. I don't even know what the craziest upset would be uh, compared to the first one. And then now the Cowboys have become this powerhouse monster team. And the Raiders we haven't seen since the beginning of the video have a chance to beat them. And Hunter Renfro drops the ball. Not a good time for that, Renfro. Not a good time. He needs to go back to Clemson for his 12th season. He'll somehow still have eligibility, I'm sure. He was at Clemson for, I looked it up, no joke, nine years. Don't look that up. Jimmy G dropping back to throw. Throwing over the middle and finds Hunter Renfro. Plus the face mask. That's going to end up stopping the clock as well. And it's going to be half the distance to the goal. The Raiders are going to get the football at about, about the two-yard line on the one, even. He went down at the two. I thought it was like the four. But 
They are now on the one yard line, knocking on the door. You could run the ball four times if you wanted to. I don't think they're even gonna run it once though. Jimmy G fires to the end zone, nearly intercepted. Jimmy, please, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do not throw the game away like Russell Wilson did earlier. Please, Jimmy. You've already made this comeback. Nobody expects you to win. You cannot settle for three, and you definitely can't turn over the football. Throw it to Devontae Adams. Over the middle. Michael Mayer dropped the ball. Oh, my goodness, dude. The Raiders are, are blowing it. They have Josh Jacobs and the ball on the one-yard line. First and goal from the one. They haven't even tried running the ball. And that's not going to change here. They have trips right. Mayer <laughs> off to the left. Uh, this is brutal. Here's Jimmy G. Over the middle. Nearly intercepted again. Jimmy, what what are you doing? Damone Clark got hands on it. And I want them to go for it. But, <laughs> I mean, the, they're probably just going to take the field goal. And tie it. Oh, he's such cowards. Such cowards, dude. I honestly, I hope they miss at this point. Nah, he drilled it. I, did, I didn't hope that they miss. I just can't believe they didn't win it. You had first and goal on the one. Run the ball. Oh, and the Cowboys are driving. Oh my goodness, dude. They are driving. They might get into field goal range pretty easily here. Third and three from the 46 yard line. Oh no, the clock's ticking. All right, I guess it's going overtime. Cowboys couldn't get into field goal range. That's tough. That's tough. Cowboys win the toss. Of course, they're going to elect to receive. Raiders are going to need to make some plays on defense. Cowboys are driving, and they score. But as we saw earlier, we're going to give the Raiders a chance to answer, and they can't. So four straight incompletions. Cowboys continue to move on. I am ecstatic to figure out the salary cap. It's going to be so fun. You can probably hear it in my voice how stoked I am. It's going to be awesome. Either way, the Raiders are out. And the Cowboys are going to move on into that space. So their westward expansion continues. They've pretty much claimed the entire west. All that stands in their way, the Minnesota Vikings. And anything north or west is going to be the Vikings. Anything south or east will be the Panthers, and we're going to say that the Eagles get a little bit of a break here. It's going to be Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams. And the McCaffrey contract is not expensive at all. That actually really shouldn't be a problem. The Trent Williams contract is going to be a massive problem, which means I probably just settle on trying to get Devontae Adams to work, and then we can trade one of these receiver contracts. But it's going to be tough either way. We're going to not worry about Trent Williams right now. We're going to get McCaffrey over. And then I think, yeah, we're going to try Devontae Adams. It's just easier to get a contract that's 14 mil than 27, nearly double that. All right, and Devontae Adams is going to be sent over here in a minute. I know Trent Williams is slightly higher rated. I think this uh, makes a lot more sense. And it's the only thing that's going to work, which is what you have to keep in mind as well. They now have just an insane team. That's pretty much what it is. I don't even have anything to say. Just insane. I've said the word insane probably about an insane amount of times in this video. I'm going to say at least 16. Mm, that's a pretty decent line. Might be. I might take the under on that, to be honest. I might take the under on my own line. And yes, I am a degenerate. Also, I never noticed Hunter Lipke has a backwards hat in his profile picture. Here's headshot here. I don't think I've ever seen that. He was actually a sick player at North Dakota State, too. He can end up being, you know, one of those nice role players. I'm not going to say Alec Ingold. I actually think he might be a little bit more dynamic than Alec Ingold, but pretty decent receiving fullback. But ultimately, we'll see if the Cowboys even use him. Most fullbacks, I mean, it's a dying breed. Kyle Juszczyk kind of gets the most production, I would say. We've seen Project Pat uh, Ricard of the Ravens get used sometimes. Ingold might be the highest paid fullback in the league right now. Uh, or Juszczyk probably is, actually. But Ingold might be second. Carolina Panthers are up, and we'll see which direction they're going. South, that's the ocean. How about a different direction? 
Northeast, that is the Eagles. Haven't seen them for a while either. 85 overall for the Panthers compared to the 84 overall of the Eagles. This is going to be an interesting one. The Panthers simulate so well. The Eagles just have so many star players, right? I think I would predict the Panthers to win, but you got to go to the link. Got to go to Philadelphia. So it could still be really, really tough. If I had to pick, I would go Carolina, as I mentioned. But I wouldn't be surprised to see the Eagles take this either. This should be a good game. Eagles on the board first with a field goal. And now a touchdown as we approach halftime. Panthers do get on the board, but the Eagles answer right away. And the Panthers answer that answer right away and take the lead in the second half. It's 28-17 Carolina. Eagles not going down without a fight, though. And the Eagles actually take the lead. And oh my goodness. How do they get 39 points? They just got the football right back. Extra point good by Jake Elliott. And then the, the kickoff for the touchback. Penalty on the defense, right? And then the Eagles got the ball. Two-yard rush by DeAndre Swift for a touchdown. There must have been some type of fumble on the penal penalty on the defense. There must have been a fumble on the kick return. I don't know, because the Eagles just got the ball instantly and gave the ball to DeAndre Swift for a, a two-yard touchdown. We're missing a little bit of context here, but this might be the game. It might be over. No, I mean, the Panthers... They, they're fighting. Jalen Hurts kneels it down. And that's the game. What a weird finish to this one. The Eagles have knocked off the Panthers. And they're going to take over a ton of territory. You can see from the map here. They're not going to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple. They're going to absolutely grow their, <laughs> their size here by... A tremendous amount. They are growers, not showers, apparently. Apparently. And even though the AFC seems to be clearly be at least going into the season the most talented conference, there are just three teams remaining, and they are all NFC teams. And the Eagles go ahead and claim the entirety of the Southeast. I'll tell you, <laughs> Cowboys have the entirety of the Central. Eagles with the entirety of the Southeast. Vikings with the entirety of the Northwest. Something's got to give. Can't stay like this, obviously. And anything south uh, south for the Cowboys is going to be uh, the Eagles, obviously. The Eagles, if we get them, will only be able to go north and take on the Cowboys. And then the Vikings will only be able to go south and take on the Eagles. So the only way this is not um, not a choice for us here is if we get the Cowboys. Meaning our decision would be made for us with the other ones. And it is going to be the Cowboys. So we are actually going to have to spin the wheel here and uh, have a decision made for us. It's to the north, Cowboys, Vikings. Cowboys are a 91 overall. The Vikings are an 83. And... It's going to be tough for salary, but we made it work last time. And Justin Jefferson and Patrick Sertan, I don't think have been paid yet, right? So it actually might not be incredibly expensive to transfer those guys over, which would definitely work to the Cowboys and for video purposes, my benefit. Vikings with a field goal lead and now extend it to two field goals, still one possession. Cowboys with only a field goal. We have not seen a touchdown yet. And as soon as I say that, the Cowboys get the first one. 10-9, 17-9 now into the fourth quarter. That's the dagger, 24-9. If the Vikings manage to pull this off, it would be a miracle in Minneapolis, but it's not. Cowboys knock them off, and it's going to be an NFC East final. It'll be the first Super Bowl in NFC history where the other team is also an NFC team. It's a completely NFC Super Bowl, which is just the NFC Championship. But this is the final two teams, so it's also the Super Bowl, and the Vikings are done, is what I'm saying. It was a valiant effort by the Vikings, to be honest. Great effort, but in the end, they couldn't do it. Where? What is the purple here on the Vikings? Why is this not working? What layer is this on? Just Photoshop stuff. Oh, I'm trying to make it purple. I'm stupid. Don't worry about me. All right, Cowboys have... What What is that? 70% of the U.S. here? And as a Giants fan who hates both of these teams, 
Not what I wanted to see the end get to. Not at all. And we have to clear just under six mil with two players to get Justin Jefferson and Patrick Sertan over. I think I'm just going to end up... I don't know. The receivers are tough because there are four really good ones already. All right. That took not actually that long, honestly. It worked out pretty well. Justin Jefferson and... Who's the other one? Patrick Sertan are now on the Dallas Cowboys. I, there's just no way they're going to lose, right? I'm trying to get that jinx in. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get it in. But I don't want the Eagles to win either. Can they both lose? Is that a possibility? Also, I caught this. I forgot to give the Eagles the reinforcements from the Panthers. I caught it. I know probably a lot of you were screaming that I forgot to do this. Well, I somehow heard you in the past. You guys are all time travelers. Tyreek Hill and Derrick Henry have made it to the Eagles. And I also have to give Jalen Hurts that plus two overall boost. So we are good to go. Eagles, Cowboys, USA map on the line. Who's going to take it home? Okay, neutral site, Super Bowl. Does a team get a home field advantage in the Super Bowl in this? You wouldn't think they would or should, but they also might. No, they don't. Okay, they actually have a plan in place for that. I know it seems like that should be obvious, but you never know with these guys. And here we go. Eagles out to an early 7-0 lead. Cowboys get a field goal in response and then a touchdown to make it 10-7. Eagles touchdown of their own 14-10. Cowboys 13-14 and a touchdown to make it 20-14. Now 28-14. Eagles need to do something ASAP. And all they're doing is allowing touchdowns. But they are scoring as well. And then an instant 75-yard rush by Christian McCaffrey pushes the Cowboys out to probably an insurmountable lead. And that is the ball game. The Cowboys are your NFL imperialism champions here on Madden NFL 24. Cowboys get it done. They are going to claim the entirety of the USA map. Eagles. Eliminated. Cowboys take over. And that is your final. America's team. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable how that happened. America's team, dude. America's team, my ass. And here they are. And now they have proof. That's what this is, but this would hold up in a court of law, unfortunately. Patrick Mahomes hoisting the Lombardi for the Cowboys. I'm gonna claw my eyes out. I'm gonna, I might restart this. I might throw away 12 hours of recording. That seems wise. All right, that is gonna be the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.